area building import for, um, I guess since like early 2018, so about two years now. Um, and uh, there's a number of folks have been working on this project even before we started. Um, I'll touch on that in a little bit. But um, so what Maggie asked me to do tonight is, um, is come out of the forest and see the trees or do the inverse of that because I'm in the trees and now I need to see the forest, right? So I'm going to try to give a basic <laughs> presentation and not dive too much into detail. Um, <laughs> Uh, thanks for those who did uh, watch the OSM uh, presentation um, from Minneapolis. Um, I did get into a lot of detail there and we do, you know, of course, have a lot of detail on the project. Um, so, uh, but yeah, tonight we're going to just try to like do the sort of what are imports and um, and then as you can expect, the majority of my examples are going to be from the Denver metro region and what we've been working on recently. Um, but glad to have uh, other folks doing imports in other areas um, on and um, uh, yeah um, so we'll uh, we'll just hop in here so um, I guess maybe before I go um, to if I do presenter mode is that um, a little bit better for everyone to see I guess I lose my notes right that's the old trade-off but um, We'll give it a whirl here. So, um, you know, uh, what exactly are imports? Um, oh, hey. <laughs> Here's my Hold on one second. Hello. Come here. Come on. Come on. Happen at some point. <laughs> I have a rowdy little dog. Um, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, starting out. Um, Proceed with caution, right? It's um, it's a little bit of a joke, you know, because it's like, ooh, feels very intimidating. And when you see the next slide, you'll see where it comes from. But anybody who's touched an import knows that um, there's a reason why there's the caution sign. And so you do go slowly, and you know, you want to make sure that you're um, you're doing good in the you know the overall end game. Um, you know, your net addition is better than the trouble that you're stirring up <laughs> while you're doing it. Um, so um, essentially though what uh, an import is is a bulk addition of data to the map, right? Um, and so it can come from lots of different sources, we'll touch on that, but um, you know a normal editor uses um, ID very commonly and you know doing edits one at a time or even if you're in uh, Jossen you can do edits one at a time and um, using imagery to end your local knowledge to add to the map and um, I just tried to sum up in 30 seconds what teach OSM and everybody else does <laughs> very well and eloquently in a you know uh, a much better fashion but so you know that's sort of if you consider like normal editing the the import is, you know, taking bulk data and doing bulk functions on it so that when you bring it into the map, um, it kind of expedites the creation of certain layers. Um, so, yeah, so when you go to um, the imports, the main import page, um, you know, you get the warning message right away. And so, you know, again, alluding to that caution that, um, you know, you can bring things in and bring in errors and bring in problems when you do it in bulk and um, we want to be very cautious of not doing that. You can also um, accidentally overwrite some things and upset people that have been working really hard on the map in that normal fashion that is um, very accurate but also time consuming. Um, and uh, I, you know, personally have deleted buildings that I shouldn't have and people let me know. <laughs> They're like, I put that building in there. That was my time. You know, do you, do you care nothing for this? And luckily, um, Jack's a good sport, right? And very apologetic and he'll, you know, helps me through um, and, and our community, right? So that's a big part of having a good community involved in import. Um, because you need that conversation to make sure that everyone um, knows what you're doing and that you're not um, intentionally goofing things up and that you're going slow so that if you do make a goof, you know, it's easy to overcome. So, um, so anyway, again, take warning and then um, 
there's a little um, icon down there from an 80s punk rock band that had this really great Take Warning song that I always think of when I hear that phrase. So, so that's just my, I always have a little goofy shout out in my presentation. So there you go. Um, but okay, so Imports 101. Um, this, uh, there's a link to this article, which actually links out to um, the Wayback Machine, but it's from, from our good friend Martin, who um, he said, really, the number one thing about imports is taking every precaution to make sure that there's no like um, arduous manual edits that are based on ground surveying that we lose in our bulk import process. Like that is the heart and soul of the map right is like us being boots on the ground people like knowing our area and making it awesome so his article uh, was called imports love them or loathe them and it was a, a 2010 article but um you know his screenshot is really illustrative that where the data is has been bulk imported and and sort of where it's growing into right um there are benefits the, the benefits are that you get a lot of data in and you can start really using then editor time to fine tune what's been put in. There's negatives, right? Again, the um, overriding things unintentionally or just, um, you know, bringing in a whole set of bias from, you know, a data transformation, like unintentional, you know, creation of bias in the in the map that um, then somebody has to go fix. So, um, you know, trade off will probably be the theme every time people talk about imports. Um, but I guess you know um, when we talk more about the Denver import, you'll know sort of where I stand, <laughs> uh, what my opinion is. But um, we'll get there. So, um, okay. Uh, the import guidelines, right? The wiki is super important to everything. Um, and so this is where you're going to get your um, how to how to import, like what do I do? Uh, there's the, pro the process, um, you know, one through six of the steps and each one of those has a section. And, and then the key considerations to me are a lot of the workflow components, like how are you actually going to do it? Um, get a dedicated user account mechanics stuff like that right um the other thing you're going to get from the guidelines page is that list of um who's been doing what with imports um so um you know there's many many in that catalog i just took a screenshot of the top to show um with the wiki you know how it documents and like um i'm sure y'all will see yeah, those of you involved with uh imports will see your own entries there right if you scroll down um, so um oh here's a funny slide that i forgot to uh, paste the image in <laughs> imagine here many data types being represented in fun little cartoonish fashions and <laughs> think about roads and buildings and uh, <laughs> parks and other things that could come in a, a bulk data import um, and so from that, I'll just jump ahead and talk about data sources, right? That's another way to think about what could be imported. Um, and uh, the first consideration when you think about your data source is your license. Um, is the license, the use license of that data that you've acquired compatible with the use license and the terms for importing into OpenStreetMap? Like numero uno, most important thing you got to figure out. Um, I come from a background working with uh, public data, which is you know separate from open data, defined as data that comes from a government entity that's you know paid for the people, by the people, that kind of thing, um, and about the people, right? It's like uh, the byproduct or the off gas of the government doing government functioning. But it's also interesting things about businesses and licensed professionals and um you know where are the parks and all sorts of things um you know a lot of geography good geography data comes from um our our public stewards which we should always thank and always be appreciative of them being out there you know um keeping improving the accuracy and quality of that open data um which of course the screenshots from the wiki the license is the first consideration. The other consideration is how good is the data that you want to bring it in? You know, again, are you going to be bringing in like data 
that's going to cause more problems and wreak havoc and, and upset all the validators and cause the red lights to go off and everyone to yell at you in the comments <laughs> and on Slack and, <laughs> and then sometimes in person <laughs> when they can find you and, <laughs> you know, all those loving things that my uh, Colorado community keeps me on my toes about, you know, and all of us other editors. It's a, I'm fortunate to have a really good community in Colorado. There's a lot of folks that have been uh, working on our map for a long time. Um, and they're vocal. And so, you know, it's good. It's good to be um, interactive and, and get that feedback to help us all do better. So um, I guess one of the things I forgot to mention on the previous slide was that I'm not going to really go into like all the details of all the things about imports. Um, uh, maybe I should just go back a second. Um, so I did mention that there are a number of folks that, um, ooh, sorry, I got an internet connection. Um, there's a number of folks that like really worked through all of our documentation and our process and getting our task manager set up in the beginning. Um, I came in about two years after the thing got started. So um, there's super important things about getting community buy-in and you know registering your project and all those great details are in these guidelines. I am not an expert by any means on a lot of the components. I'm largely going to talk about um, number step three and four. <laughs> so I should have given you that heads up. I'm going to, not that community buy-in isn't super important, right? Like those things, they were just done by, by other people on my team. And so I'm not going to speak to the things I don't know well. But what I do know is data licensing. I know, um, you know, source data, public data, obviously, um, and then documentation and workflow and and those pieces. Those are sort of my sweet spot. So, um, so yeah, going on. That's just letting you know why I'm only really going to talk about data and workflow because that's really my piece of it. Um, but lots of other great folks do amazing things, and I don't want to underscore that. I'm just not as well versed. Okay. So um, anyway, back to data, um, data sources. Uh, so here's, um, in our project, we had two primary data sources that we brought into consideration. Um, and this is the, um, uh, it's like the associated grid of the ortho imagery photos for our aerial imagery proje uh, project. It's flown every two years back to 2014 for um, a nine county area. The um, sort of like, it looks a little lighter in color just in this image. The more center region is a higher resolution. It just looks lighter because there's basically more white grid right the ratio purple pixels you can so that's anyway higher resolution that's our um our flight area and so that imagery was used to generate building footprints which from there we joined with the statewide addresses um which uh so that previous region was sort of uh, a zoom if you're not super familiar with colorado i don't know if you can see my mouse but where it says colorado about north of where it says colorado springs and west of where it says united states that's roughly that Denver metro area. Um, so yeah, so we took these addresses, which are a statewide um, data product that's an aggregate of county parcels transformed into centroids for um, all the counties that you see represented there, um, which is an actively updated data set. Um, and so um, for our import, that means that, you know, like earlier, I mentioned of all the layers we could import, um, parts, trees, fire hydrants, bike racks, we chose to import buildings with associated address tags. So that's like the, the part of our, this import that um, a lot of my screenshots will come from. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I guess I can just round out data sources by saying that, um, you know, there's a ton of different public data catalogs that are out there and growing every day that need a lot of support from people using them. Um, and behind those data catalogs are actual data stewards that, you know, work every day to, to keep that data updated. And so um, we're fortunate that both of the data stewards for Dr. Cog and for um, the, um, the Colorado State GIS office, which creates that address layer, um, 
they they put their data on the Colorado Information Marketplace, which is you know the warehouse for all data sets that have been made machine readable that are in the public domain for people to use. Um, so that's kind of my shout out again to those workers and this data. Um, that to me is sort of the primary, I think, opportunity for data that's available that could be imported. Um, and the part that I like the most about it is that the government folk, um, they do keep the data updated, right? Like their mission is to drive statute, statutory requirements. And so that's what, you know, their procurement of the data comes from. And so they're keeping it updated. And I think there's a really cool potential in the future for the relationship between the open community and the tools and resources that we have set up with you know, interaction with the government and their efforts towards keeping data updated. Because, um, you know, one of the biggest challenges or complaints about imports is that if they're not sort of um, endorsed or there isn't uh, something designed to keep that data fresh, it becomes stale and it can be like a bulk of stale data in the map. Um, and, and that can, you know, that is a problem. Um, and right now it really relies on the people that, who are sort of on the validator team, right? But you may know them in your community, but there are people up there, um, I guess you may or may not know them. Some of them, you know, are quietly doing the good work of just checking everything that comes into the map. When you have, you know, um, a high school class that teaches uh, editing using OpenStreetMap, um, hopefully there's somebody there that says that replies to those kids and says hey the, this is like this active community you know and um you made a mistake but here's how you correct it and, and we're all like working together and, and that's like a really cool part of the experience you know and so certainly in colorado we're fortunate to have those validators um and so i guess this is my other my shout out to the validators <laughs> Shout out to the public data providers, shout out to the validators, because they're definitely doing, you know, the hard work of like just keep it, keeping the quality up on the map. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm good at tangents. That ends data sources. <laughs> the other thing that I'm good at talking about is documentation. Um, so, um, so again, I'm just going to start off with a screenshot from the wiki, just covering the basics. Um, the Documentation to me is um, often seen by folks as a curse or, you know, just too long, didn't read all that good stuff. But for me, it's like, um, it's the opportunity to really communicate those pieces that are the, you know, the frequently asked questions, the commonly tripped over mistakes, the things that we're all going to have the same experience with. Um, and uh, so, of course, it says, you know, you have to register your project. So that earlier page that I showed of the projects that were listed, that's why that gets good play, that if you're going to do an import, you have to register it. You also um, need to have a plan and publish it to your wiki. And, um, and then you also have to get your list of contributors going, which um, also comes into play with that mechanics bit about, uh, you know, you have to have a special account to do an import. So. Um, for uh, for the Denver import, um, uh, the first screenshot is our GitHub repository, which houses our workflow and our README. Second shot is our wiki, which does our project plan. And the sh third shot is our tasking manager, which shows um, how we serve up our tiles and get folks um, palatable little chunks that they can work on and learn on, and, um, and also that we can in so, to some degree, rein in our change set size. The number of changes that get submitted in a single editing session is called a change set. So um, the maximum, here's a fun fact. <laughs> fun fact importers know, uh, the maximum number of characters that you can import in a single change set before impacting your upload speed is 10,000. <laughs> So uh, <laughs> you try to update more than 10,000 uh, change sets and you have crappy internet, it'll take like three hours. That is my scenario. That's why I know that. <laughs> I think others don't have that problem because they have better internet than I do maybe. I don't know. But um, 
that was that's certainly something I've experienced. Uh, and also, ten thousand is a pretty big change set. To change set if you're like don't have really high quality data because when folks come to look at it, if you have a lot of different errors in a single change set that's like ten thousand, it's hard for them to um, tell you you know what you did wrong. They're like you did a lot of things wrong, and I only have like this little text box to tell you. Um, so for whatever that's worth, you know when folks think about workflow, um, it, it's, a, it's a pain point, right, for importing, like, and just really getting the fluidity out of um, managing those changes and keeping those change sets uh, something you can work with. Sorry, I said I was going to try to stay out of the, the forests and look at the, or stay out of the trees and look at the forest. So um, here's the tools we use. <laughs> Get have GitHub, you know, you got to have your, um, your task manager, and of course, you got to have your wiki. So, um, just another like nod towards documentation. Um, this shows how we use those two things differently. The one on the right is from Task Manager, which is sort of like making the peanut butter sandwich, and then how to import is like saying there is a peanut butter sandwich. Um, so, um, what exactly is our um, our project? Um, this screenshot shows sort of how those data layers were joined together and, and become um, the boxes of the building footprints and the numbers, you know, shown on the right are the attributes. So that's what we're importing in this again. Um, and then like, okay, so what does it look like? like if you're gonna do an import, um, it generally looks like this, right? The one on the left is what the map looks like, and the one on the right is um, the imp the data that's coming in. Um, and you can see that in some cases, like a great one to point out is this um, sort of horseshoe type shape building that exists in both scenarios, right? And that's why I can't just like let the machine dump everything from my import layer into the map because it's like, I'm a machine. I can't tell exactly if these are the same building or not. Like, what do I know? And I'm like, no, obviously they look the same machine. <laughs> Come on. So the tasking manager is um, uh, definitely like our best friend, uh, but our other best friend is our good friend Jennings Anderson, who is a Coloradan and if you have seen him present he does like really amazing things with just the activity in OpenStreetMap. He has he's a computer science guy and the ability to just really do really cool things with lots of data. So um, so our project gets the benefit of him creating these maps that allow us real-time awareness of how our imports going through the process and I'm really just tip of the iceberg on um, some of those really nitty gritty details that I talked about and um, I think I'm like at the half hour mark. <laughs> so, uh, you know, like I said at the beginning, I just, there's a lot of content around this stuff. Um, this one's a fun one um, I like to show because there's like an analog process that I do. And I just love as a map geek, like how there do exist like some sort of like, you just like do your own cartography once in a while. And so, you know, how do we dole out the tasks and task manager when we have like a really big project? Um, so one of the things I do is just maintain this, um, you know, sort of basic GIS map of which tasks end up into which uh, projects. So that's what that guy is. Um, and then, uh, you know, I guess I'm, like I said, I'm giving you, I'm sort of like, giving you the things that are more, most interesting to me about imports and I'm jumping around. So the last piece is like what happens when the data updates over time and you're like still working on 2016 data <laughs> uh, and it's 2020, right? And like, so most of the stuff in some areas that don't see a lot of geographic change, it's still pretty cool, you know, like, and we look at imagery, so it does work out. Um, but in a lot of our more like urban areas, the changes that have occurred, we definitely can't use our 2016 data, um, or at least it's like a guide, but I often will even pull 2020 data for those areas just to do quality. Um, but I think that's, you know, certainly if you read blogs and you start researching up, um, 
imports, a lot of people talk about like what happens to the data and who's going to maintain it and what happens if it becomes stale. And um, I, uh, if you guys know Jimmy Rocks um, from OSM stuff, one of his things that he always says is it's the same thing that happens to the data updated by other methods. It just needs to be maintained. And that's like what we're all doing here. So, you know, you bulk imported something that was pretty good quality. And then other folks are going to need to keep like updating it. And, and how do we do that is sort of what keeps us all busy in the future. Um, lots of work in this field. Good stuff. So the last thing um, that's like super esoteric and I love it, but like, how do you define complete? Um, so there's a couple different ways. How many addresses are we getting in there, right? To me, that's like complete. When my address database is good and honestly, when my units are in there and we can start doing some really sweet like housing and analytical studies, um, that's gonna be like spot on. So um, we also have like an import progress map, you know, like we just have have a number of grids, how many of those grids got looked at. Um, and the last one that's super fun is, and of course, these are all like shout out to Jennings. Uh, Jennings made all of these. These are dynamic interactive maps that you can find on the web and like zoom in and click and get at their fabulous. So his last bit is the temporal viewer, which, um, there we go, is a um, you know, you can see the timeline at the bottom, right? And so the bumps are obviously when we had import sessions um, and got folks together to contribute. And the goal is to see that thing sort of grow in a swirly green fashion until it's like, ta-da, a bunch of buildings. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I think I'm, yeah, I'm ending on that um, part two. <laughs> There's, there's always more stuff to talk about, right? But uh, I think that should hopefully get a lot of you folks there that wanted to see an intro to stuff. And um, yeah, but like I said, it was a good, super good exercise for me to like just pull up a level and look at things uh, from that perspective. So thank you all for this opportunity to share with you. And um, I'm gonna pass it back to Maggie.